I just rewrote it this morning, so I don't know how it's going to turn out. Chapter 5, 1 Peter, verse 1, it says, The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ. As I first read this, it said the elder. Now, Peter is saying, he is talking about pastors, ministers. But then it talks about the elders. Now, everyone in here is an elder. Did you know that? An elder can be old like me, or it can be just a young spiritual person. An elder is a spiritual person in a church. A church has a pastor, has elders, and deacons. The shepherd, which is the minister, is supposed to feed the sheep, feed the flock. That's what it says in verse 2. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Now the, the shepherd who takes care of the sheep does not spoon feed the sheep. It takes them and he feeds them. He provides the food. The elder of the church, the elders, are the spiritual people who also can feed the flock. They are the people who can step in and help the shepherd. They are the ones who are, uh, how long is, who, who knows the scriptures, who knows what God does, who knows how to pray. And then you have the deacons. The deacons are the ones who helps, who assist the pastor, like setting up the communions or doing the things such as that. But Peter is talking here. He says, I want you to be the elder. And I, it says, and I, who am I also? So he considers himself a pastor, a witness of the suffering of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be rewarded. The crowns that we are talking about here is giving out when Christ comes back and we go to, up to heaven and he hands out the rewards. We are going to be rewarded for teaching, feeding the flock. Now, not everybody can be a minister. A minister comes and he is the shepherd. Anybody can be a preacher. What is the difference between a minister and a preacher? Anybody know? A preacher is one who sits down and gets a sermon and gives it to the people for them to undertake. A minister... Not all of us can be preachers, but we all can be ministers. Because if you minister to something, somebody, you provide a need. You meet the need. If you minister to somebody, you minister to that need. We can all be ministers. We cannot all get up there and preach that we can all feed the flock. Now, Peter here is talking about ministers. And I thought, Lord, I don't know how to get this woven in because we're the sheep. The after the shepherd feeds the sheep, he puts them out to pastor. What do they do in the pasture? Anybody know? I don't know. I'm acting like I know what about sheep, but I don't know but just what I read. But what do they do? I, this is what God gave me. But what do you think the sheep do when they get out in the pasture? They what? They feed. 
They do. When I said, Lord, what am I going to do? And he said, he, he brought this to my mind, and I can say I don't know anything about it. He says, when the sheep get out in the pasture, their head is down eating all time. The ministers and the leaders or the elders in the church gets in to the food and not just on Sunday. That's what creates an elder. Somebody who gets in the word, who understands the word, and who can lead, guide, and direct. That's what ministers do. I was in, I was getting ready to graduate from college, and we had a little, the people who was getting ready to uh, graduate, they had a meeting, and they were going to tell us what, as ministers, what we should not do. And I remember two things, and I don't do them. (laughs) I'm going to tell you what I do. Anyway, the question was this. Should a minister have a job outside of the church? And this one guy, you know, we're all talking, and this one guy said, I don't see why he shouldn't. And the instructor said, "Uh, would you tell us more? He said, well, let me tell you something. A minister can have another job outside because all he does is has two messages on one on Sunday morning, one on Sunday night, and one on Wednesday. And I looked at him and I said, you don't want to go into no ministry. You don't even know what's required. But you know, that's what people think at ministers. But they're shepherds. They feed the flock. Now, I want you to turn to John, and we'll go back to Peter, but let's turn to John, chapter 21, verse 15. And here, Jesus is talking to Peter. Now, Peter... Probably, if he was a man of today, would not be what we considered a man to be a minister. He was kind of brash. He kind of had a mind of his own, and he was impulsive. What he wanted to do, he, he did. But Jesus called him as a disciple. A disciple is a follower of God. A shepherd of the church who feeds the flock is a follower of God. We are a disciple. You see, we blend right in with this because we are a disciple. We are believers. We are followers of God. We believe what he says. And so Jesus is talking to Peter. They had been fishing, and they caught no fish, and then they put it down. Y'all know that. And they caught many fishes. So Peter is talking to Jesus in verse 15, chapter 21, verse 15. It says, So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? Now what he's saying here is he's talking about agape love. What is agape love? Agape love is God's love. And Peter answers, Yea, Lord, right away he says, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Now what Peter is saying is what they call a philo love. He said, Yes, I love you as a friend. And Jesus is trying to get him to commit. Because when you have that agape love as a minister or as an elder or whatever you want to call him, you care about more about people than yourself. And Peter was not that type of man. 
You say, well, how do you know? Well, listen, what happened when Jesus was hanging on the cross? What did Peter do? Did he stand around and watch? Where did he go? What? He ran away. And what did he do when he ran away? He denied the Lord. They said, you're one of them. He said, ah, oh, not me. And I think that Jesus and Peter realizes that. Jesus wanted to know how much did Peter commit to him. That's what he's saying to us. How much do you commit to me? How many loves Jesus? We all do. How many confess we love Jesus? We all do. And how many of us who said, I'm going to stand for Jesus no matter what? We all do. You know why we say that? Because we never had to do it. It's easy to say, I will do. It's hard to do. And Jesus knew this of Peter. And that's why he wanted to make sure that Peter loved him more than them. Well, who was them? Them was the other disciples. Do you love me more than these? Let me tell you. How many of you love your family? We all do. But how many would go far to really take whatever it takes to get him saved? You see, we will only go so far because we don't want to hurt their feelings. We don't want to step on their toes. We don't want to make them feel bad because we love them. Well, I got news for you. You've got to love them straight to hell if you don't tell them about Jesus. And this is what Jesus is trying to find out about Peter when he said, do you love me? He said, well, yes, Lord, I love you. Then he says, feed the lambs. Well, who are the, who, who's the lambs? The lambs are the new Christians. Who do we, bring, who do we bow, browbeat down when they make a mistake? You should have known better. We don't do that in our church. She told you what? That ain't true. That's not what we do. Instead of realizing he's a lamb. What did Jesus do when the lamb got lost? He went and got him, put him on his shoulder, took him back to the flock, and watched over him. That's the other, shirt, that, the other stuff that the shepherd does. He watches over the flock. We as elders of the church should do the same. We should not stand back and point fingers and call names. We should go in love and tell the people. I have a bad habit of telling people what I think. <laughs> it's always in love. It's never the right way. My mouth just, there it goes. But I try to correct what I see wrong. I just have not got it. I've been told you're not tactful. How do you be tactful, Joyce? Do you, are, you jo are you tactful? What is tactfulness? What? Oh, I don't have that. <laughs> I try. I'm 100% better since the study of, of uh, the, the Holy Spirit, the one tell you. But this is what Jesus is doing. He's trying to find out what Peter is and what he's made of. Verse 16, it says, 
He saith to him the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? Now he's saying, do you love me as you love me? As a friend, do you love me? Not a copy, just do you love me? He didn't say, do you love me more than them? He said, do you love me? Again, we all say, yes, we all love God. We all love Jesus. We say, what a friend we have in Jesus. I only trust in Jesus. Everything we say is to, pro- is to, to glorify Jesus. But what does that word love mean to you? Is he your friend or is he your master? And this is what he is trying to find out from Peter. Why? Because he knows what Peter was. And this is what he says. He says, yes, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. You know I love me. Jesus knows, God knows, how we love him. We can love him wholeheartedly, or we can hardly love him. But Jesus knows how you love him. And how you love him is how we are going to help the shepherd take care of the sheep. Because we're elders, because we are disciples, because we are believers, because we love Jesus. But how do we love Jesus? Jesus knows how much we love him. But Lord, you know how much I love you. Yes, but I want it confirmed. I'm going to put you in my service, and I want to know how you are going to handle... How do you handle pressure? Last week we talked about temptation. Temptation was uh, of uh, circumstances, and troubles. How do you handle that? Do you run off and say, Oh, I know the Lord can do it, but I don't know why he don't do it, and I'm so fed up. I'm so, and, or do you just sit by and say, I know God's going to do it? How do you handle it? The, the way you handle things is how much you love God and how much trust you have in him. And he says, in this one, he says, feed my sheep. I got news for you people. If you get a little puppy, he is so cute. He grows up to be an ugly old dog. You get a little kitten and she's so cute and she just grows up to be a mean old cat. But you get lambs, they grow up to be sheep. And sheep, I think, must be the dumbest thing God created. Otherwise, he would not compare us to a sheep. They put their heads down and they wander away. We put our head down when we get in trouble or when we have a problem and we wander away. That's why God needs to know what shepherd he is wanting to put in over the flock. Now this don't mean any I don't mean to be any disrespectful to the church of God. But I'm going to tell you one thing. In Foursquare, we never voted on a pastor. Never. It was put out to the pastors and said, there is going to be an opening in thus and thus and thus church. You pray about it, and if you feel like God is leading you, then you apply. And every church was supplied with the shepherd that God placed. 
He placed in our church a young man. He, he was 23 years old. And you know 23 years old, <laughs> you know, they're just about as bad as a 20-year-old and a 16-year-old. They have not quite grown up yet. And when we all seen that young man walk in the church, we thought, oh, my goodness. He was one of the best pastors. Why? Because he was a good shepherd. God knew who he had to put into that church at that time for what the sheep needed. Now, I'm not saying this wrong to vote. Don't go out and say, well, Lord, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that when God puts them there, he puts them there. I wanted to go to, go to Denver, Colorado when I got out. I had plans to move to Denver, Colorado. I had plans to be there. But he sent me to Georgia. Hot, miserable. Ugh. But I enjoyed that church. I enjoyed the people. God just opened up door after door after door, met and supplied needs after needs after needs. Why? Because that's where he wanted me. Not in Denver. So I'm telling you, this is what he is trying to find out about Peter. Not that he has anything against Peter. He just wants to see what kind of a shepherd he's going to be. He wants to see what kind of shepherd, what kind of, of elders we're going to be. Because not only are we worried about the lambs who are new Christians, but we should be worried about the lambs that's back there. We should be worried about them and how they're going to grow up, and how their needs is going to be met. And we should be worried about the ones who's back there, because it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And people, people get wore out. But God knows who to put in charge. God knows that. We voted him in. That God put him here. Verse 17. He said, He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? By this time, Peter is kind of aggravated. Peter was grieved because he said unto the to him the third time, lovest thou me. You see how, sh not so much that God wanted him to be sure, but how much Peter, he wanted Peter to be sure of his love. He wants you to be sure of you. How much do you love God? Do you love me? And Peter said, my goodness, yes, yes. Now he understands what God wants him to do. Now he understands where God is putting him. He is putting him in a place to feed the flock. And let me tell you, if you have no food, you can't feed anybody. And if you feed them the same thing over and over and over and over, they're going to get tired of it. You need to dig in that food, and you need to digest it, and you need to get the nut so that we can be good elders to help the shepherd with new lambs that's coming in. To help them back here with the little ones. The little ones, is supposed, they're not where they can receive, where Christ is going to come back and all the the the. Vials and I, they don't want to hear that. They want to know that Peter, John is in the sailboat, cast out the net and caught no fish. That's what they want to hear. But then they grow up, and then they hear Peter walked on water. He walked on water. Why did he walk on water? Because he kept his eyes upon Jesus, and that's what we want to do. 
You see, the lambs are starting to become sheep. But they don't do it without food. They don't do it without food. And the shepherd sometimes needs help. That's why he gives elders of the church. It's a plan that God has made. And it's going to be like that. Now turn back to 1 Peter. First Peter chapter 5, verse 2 again. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constrict, constrict, but willingness, not for filthy lucre, but for a ready mind. He said, you take this position as an elder... Not because of what you can get out of, but what you can give. Not for how much you get paid, but how much you love God. You see, it all comes back to what you want, to how you want to serve God. Do you love me? Yes. Will you serve for nothing? Yes. How do I know? Because I've done it. I have worked outside and worked in a church and got no pay. I didn't care. I'm not doing it for the pay. I am doing it so I can make heaven, so that I can have a little bit of somebody that said, hey, she had a part of my salvation. But nowadays, it's money, money, money. How much can you give me? How much can you do this? How much? It's not how much we can give you. It's how much you can give us. And it's how much we can give God. It not, has nothing to do. It's that agape love. This unselfishness love. It's somebody you care more about than yourself. And that is Jesus. Because he died on the cross for us. And we should do everything we can do to pay back that bill. And you say, well, we can't do that. No, we can't. But we can sure try. We can sure try. How? By being obedient to him. By doing things for him. Helping others. Not for what you can get out of. Pastors, of course they need money. They need a way to live. It used to be that a pastor, the church had the house for the pastor, the pastors, everything was for the pastor, and they got a short, little, a little, meaty part of a salary. And I got news for you people. They got a long time. Why? Because the chief shepherd took care of, of his own. I am not rich by any means. But I want to tell you one thing. God always supplies my needs. And I don't have to come up here and say, Oh, pray for me. Uh-uh. All I have to do is say, Lord, I need help. And he does it. In verse 3, neither as being Lord over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. Not getting up here behind that pulpit and saying, you better do this. I am telling you, if you do not do this, you are going to pay. And I'm going to tell you, if God don't get you, I will. You're supposed to be an example. He is an example to us. We are examples to others. You don't go around patting your back, saying, oh, I'm so holy. My mom used to say, did you see something good, Lord? He said, well, yeah. She said, well, don't don't break your arm trying to pat yourself on the back. She was full of compliments, let me tell you. But we try that. We try to get all the glory. 
It's not our glory to get. It's the Lord's. You don't rule over them. You, Chris, you don't rule over these people. You be an example. I'm just punching at him, you know. Just, But I'm telling you, some people do. Some pastors are preachers. They are not ministers. And I have said under a few... And they get up there and they use these $15 words. <laughs> I can't buy them, let alone know what they are. And now I'm going to tell you, that does not feed a sheep. A sheeper. A sheeper. <laughs> are you a sheeper? <laughs> it does. <laughs> Those words do not influence me. And I don't get anything out of it. And I don't get anything out of pastors who think they are smarter than I am. Now, I am not the sharpest knife in the drawer, let me tell you. But I know some things. Some things. So it says, don't rule over them. And and then 4 says, and when the chief shepherd, which is Jesus, shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. When you stand in a place where God wants you to be and do like you love him, and this is just not for one Sunday, but it's for every day in your life, you are going to stand before the Lord. He is going to give you a crown of glory, and then you're going to cast it at his feet. Why? Because he is the one who's deserving it. Because he is the one who helps us through this life. Dog, little puppies grow up to be dogs. Kittens grow up to be cats. And lambs grow up to be sheep. I hope we are sheep. I hope we are elders. I hope we are disciples. Because if we are, I hope that we can say when he says, Do you love me? We will know what kind of love he is talking about. Let's stand. Father God, I thank you for this message. I thank you for your help for me to give what you have given me. Lord, I just pray for each and every one that's here that we can be shepherds, that we can be elders, that we can be disciples. And Lord, if we don't know what kind of love we have for you, I would ask you to ask each and every one of us, do you love me? Lord, it's true that you know You know everything about each and every one of us. And I pray that we will begin to know the love that we have for you. The ones that's true and binding and not always wanting. But a love for you to give, to help other people, to lead, guide, and direct. And I pray, God, for each one of these people, Lord that they would be blessed by your word. I ask, Lord, that you would be with Chris, or the one who brings the message. I pray that you would be with the ones who's going to bring the music. And, Lord, I just ask that the Holy Spirit would be here. And, Father, we as sheep, as we begin to feed upon your word, that we will become stronger and healthier. And, Lord, that we will desire the words so that we will know what you would have us to do. Thanking you for this day, thanking you for these people, and I ask, Lord, that you would be with us in the next service, and I ask these things in your name, and everyone said, Amen.